Um, I don't know you guys, but I, in the five or six minutes that I have left, I want to let you know that I'm, uh, one of the goals for this year is to get to know that art in a bigger scale. Because um, one of the things that I have learned uh, is not the destination, is the journey. Is the journey is what will allow us to appreciate how great that art. And one of the best way to prepare the church for that destination is involving ourselves in the, I, I believe, is the greatest exercise and discipline that our spiritual leaders should be involved with. And it is praying and fasting and reading the Word of God. From now on, every year, at the beginning of the year, it is my intention to engage this church in a 21-day fasting journey. And I tell you one thing, every time we prepare and do fasting, great things happen in our churches. Because every time you fast and pray and study the Word of God, you get more out of Him. I don't know you guys, but I want more of Him. More of Him. More about Jesus, I want to know. And one of the beauty of engaging in fasting and praying is that you will get your edge back. I don't know how many of you can say amen to that. But I want to be sharp as a knife. Not to be detrimental to people, but to be able to defeat the enemy and be able to be, uh, to engage in ministry in an effective way. I remember reading the story of this uh, uh, lumberjack and this young man that started uh, as a new employee in this great company that cut trees all over the United States. And there was an old lumberjack guy that had been there in the company for 35 years. No one there to challenge him. He was one of the greatest. He was the greatest lumberjack ever. He cut more trees than anybody else combined in the company. That's how good it was. And he was just about to retire when this young uh, men uh, apply and he got the job. He was a strong man, full of life, full of energy. And one day he dares to challenge the old lumberjack guy. And in front of everybody in the company, he says, I want a, a context with you. I am challenging you publicly to go to the field and cut tree. And let it be known for now on who is the greatest lumberjack. You know, one of the things happens when you are young is that you think you know it all and you can do all. <laughs> the old man look at this young boy with pity, not saying much. And he said... Challenge accepted. The young man started bragging about it and he started making uh, advertising everywhere to the point that the day that the challenge was met, the day that we're having that challenge, more than 10,000 people show up from different places to see this great competition between this young man and the old lumberjack. By the way, this is a true story. Happened in Canada. So, the day of the competition begin. Both of them were given an axe, brand new axe. And the young man was strong, mighty, 
uh, full of energy, full of life. The old timer was slow, kind of dragging a little bit by the age of life. And both begin to cut trees. The young man, as he began, as he began to cut tree, he was cutting tree and cutting tree, and he never rested. I mean, he was on fire. He he wanted to prove himself, and good for him. I mean, if you if you're gonna do that kind of challenge, you better come up to the plate. So he he was swinging the axe, and he was not resting. He was uh, all engaged, not never quit, never took a break. Cutting tree after tree, and the only thing you can see is tree falling down, one after another. Once in a while, the young man looked at, at his side, and he saw the old timer, that he cut a tree, and then he sat down and rested for 15 minutes. <laughs> and he thought, oh, I got him. This will be great for my name's sake. But at the end of the day, the story tells us that when they counted the trees that both men were able to cut, the old timer cut the double amount of trees that the young man was able to cut. All frustrated, embarrassed, sweating, Disappointed. The young man looked at this uh, old timer and he said, I cannot believe that you were able to win this competition. Will you mind sharing with me how you did it? The old timer looked at this young man, said, Son, just remember this. It's not how fast you swing the axe. It's how sharp your axe is. Every time I rested for 15 minutes, I took the time to sharpen my axe. The problem with this young man was that his axe was though he had lost the edge. And that is not the only problem that this young lumberjack man faces, but it is also, I believe with all my heart, that is the problem that many Christian people faces in their spiritual walk with God. We are though spiritually we sing the song, but there is no edge to it. We lift our arms and hands to heaven, but there is not cutting edge. The power is not how much you are involved in church. The power lay in how much God had sharpened your axe. Fasting and prayer will give you your passion back. Fasting and prayer will slow you down that you may engage in a meaningful sharpening with God every day. Fasting and prayer will give you your edge back. It's so beautiful when we look at the uh, uh, chapter and uh, look uh, chapter 4, if you turn with me over there, you, you will notice something quite interesting that only Luke were able to catch her about Jesus fasting. You know, Jesus was a student of fasting and praying. He never engaged in ministry without fasting and praying. And I want you to see quickly something that is, uh, is mentioned over there. And Luke was able to demonstrate what happened with Ch to Jesus after, before and after he fasted. In Luke chapter 4, verse 1, we're going to read this. Then Jesus began be, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. 
Then, then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by a spirit into the wilderness. Verse 2 says, being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they have ended, he was hungry. I want you to catch you something that Luke mentioned. When Jesus was taken from the Jordan by the Spirit of God, the Bible says that he was filled to the fullness of the Holy Spirit. But it was only after the fasting that this is mentioned. Look at the next verse in verse 14. Look what it says. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. After fasting, his axe was sharpened. After fasting and praying, he was filled with the Holy Spirit when he got in. But after praying and fasting, fasting the Bible says that he was in the power of the Holy Spirit. I love what Ellen G. Wise says about Jesus. He says this, The potential of the Holy Spirit power which Jesus received at the time of his baptism in the Jordan only came forth into the full, full manifestation after he had completed his fasting. After he fasted, after he prayed, God's Spirit came into Action in power in his life. That's why Jesus, when he talked about fasting, he never said, if you fast. But he says, when you fast. There is a difference when if you fast and when you fast. Jesus' expectation for our Christian life is that we engage in a daily basis or regularly in this discipline of fasting and praying. One last text that I want to share with you, and it is found in Matthew chapter 17, verse 14, and 20, 14 to 21. And here it is. Matthew chapter 17, 14 to 21. And when they have come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down, to him and saying Lord have mercy on my son for he ha for he is an epileptic and suffering severely for he often fall into the fire and often into the water so I brought him to your disciples but they could not cure him at this point in Jesus' ministry, I want to let you know that the disciples were able to perform some miracles. And here it is what I want you to see. They brought him, this man, with epileptic, uh, and they, they were not able to take care of him or heal him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation how long shall I be with you how long shall I bear with you bring him here to me and here is what it says and Jesus rebuked the demon and he came out of him and the child was cured from that very hour but here it is how the disciples approach Jesus then the disciples came to Jesus privately and say, Why could we not cast him out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. For surely I said to you, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible 
for you. But here it is something that now Jesus said to his disciples. However, this kind does not go out except by praying and fasting. The reason why you were not able to perform a miracle in someone that needed it at that point in time is because you neglected the spiritual exercise of fasting and praying. I want to let you know, church, that there are some demons in our life. There are some things in our life that they will not come out unless we engage in this spiritual exercise of fasting and praying. So here we go. 21-day fasting. Let me explain what it is. And you will receive a book today. And please forgive me. It's not a book for everybody. We're going to do it by family. Now, if you are a family of one, you will have one for you. But uh, it, it was so interesting that, and this is how God orchestrated this thing. We went to different places. We ordered it online. It was in back order. We cannot get it in. And it was, um, we went to Barnes & Noble. And when we got there, the manager said, it is really hard to find this book. This book is uh, one of the best sellers. Uh, and it is not easy to find right now. Um, let me see what I can do. So he brought those 50 books that we have, he brought it from seven different places. And he said to me, I would not fast, but I will pray because I know the power of fasting and praying. He's a Christian man. And thanks to his hard work, uh, and my wife is a witness of that. We went several times, and he said, we got 10. He said, I need more than 10. And then we went again, and he said, I got five more for you. And I need, I, I'm working on it. And, and I said, keep praying, I'm praying. And, and by the grace of God, we were able to get 50. Now, if we need more, we're going to get more. But uh, at, at least we're going to start one with family. So if you are a uh, one per family, raise your hand and the deacons will give you one. I want you to have one. And as they pass it, let me explain what it is. Daniel fasting is, is a 21 day. Why 21 day, church? It's 21 day because based on studies done, it takes 21 days to create a habit. So that is why it's 21 day. During 21 day, there is a Daniel fast that is related to food, but it is more than food. And, and you can go to this. Uh, they give you recipe. They give you a devotional. By the way, in page 229, you begin a devotional life day one. And every day you will have a devotional time. This is what I'm suggesting. Take the time to go with your family for 21 days to do worship together and read this devotional together. Now, people say, well, what is, what is about Daniel fasting that is so fascinating? And it is this. The author of this book included something very powerful in it. And she went beyond food. She said, sometimes the problem is not food. Sometimes the problem is something else. So in the spiritual journey, she includes something that I think it was a revelation from God, which she said, Daniel fasting is about including something that will hinder your relationship to God and surrender that for 21 days to the Lord. For example, some people may say, I want to fast for 21 days of not watching TV. I have watched too much TV. I don't have time for family sometimes because I'm addicted to television. So I'm going to take 21 days where I will not watch TV. And 21 days of fasting from TV. So every day you will ask God to give you the power to fast over this. Sometimes it's... Uh, is, is, um, uh, health issue that you wanted to improve 
not drinking Coke or not doing something else. Whatever you want to give to the Lord for 21 days, that's the whole idea. Let me share one last testimony and, and we go. I met this couple that they were about to go to divorce. And I came across this book and I said, I want you to have this book and I want you to read it. And when they received this book, they thought this had nothing to do with marriage. But through it all, as they were reading, they went to this page that will talk about surrendering something that hindered your relationship with God. And he said, you know what? Let me try one last thing before we go into signing the divorce paper. And this is what he said to me. He shared this testimony with the church later on. He said, for 21 days, I engaged in treating my wife like a queen. I treated her like she had never been treated before in the kindest way ever. For 21 days, I engaged in releasing myself from being the attention seeker and invest everything in her. And for 21 days, he engaged this privately. He told me the story at the end. And by the grace of God, at the, five, at the end of the 21 day, he shared the testimony in church and they read the divorce paper because God had given them the edge back to have a very and a strong relationship with each other. That's what fasting and prayer will do. So whatever you want to engage with, I want you to go back. And I don't want you to just submit whatever. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's family issues. Maybe it's something private that you are facing in your own journey. Maybe you want to get to know Jesus in a different way. If you take time to rest, I guarantee you, and I can guarantee this because that's what God says in his word. That at the end of the 21-day fasting, if you do it with integrity, God will sharpen you in a way that you have never seen before. I do believe that Virginia Beach Seventh-day Adventist Church is placed in a very strategic place with an strategic mission, reaching a strategic people. I want to let you know that in our congregation today, we have people that they were from other denominations that discovered the truth of the Sabbath, and they are keeping the Sabbath. And we have been engaging with people in our churches that we have been missionary to them and God is about to do something great and wonderful but we need to have an edge back and we cannot do it unless we get in our needs and we get into a place where we said empty me out Lord I want to be filled with your presence will you like that Bobby, what about if we sing out to Jesus, I surrender? As we close, stand with me. Stand with me. Pastor, I, I was thinking the same thing, and I also want to. I think there's an opportunity for us to have intercession also. There's yes. There's other areas that have an opportunity to have a burden in their heart yes. uh, that they'd like to submit. I would like to say hi to a friend that I met this week, Sonny. Sonny is here. Um, Dave, I sent you an email if you have if you're able to set, open the picture. Uh, Sonny's daughter has been in the hospital, right, Sonny, since September. And I got word about Sonny's daughter, Chloe, um, this week. Um, and so I know within his heart of hearts that Chloe is in his heart uh, and his, this mind's family. He's, Sonny, will you come here? Will you be willing to come here with me? Um, Jesus meets us where we are. Jesus has a plan for us, and I told Sonny that this week when I met him and I met Chloe, his beautiful daughter, um, that he loves us all equally and he has an incredible plan for us. 
And I know that's true for all of us. And so that's all I share with us today. And so I'll say this prayer, and then we'll sing a cappella all to Jesus, I surrender. And I know that he has uh, purposely planned this right now for this moment for each of us to be you here, uh, for the pastor to give us this message and to touch us with his hand. Uh, let us pray. Lord, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the awesome plan that you have in our lives. Thank you for the breath that each lung is allowed to take. As we look at the picture of Chloe, we're reminded of ourselves. Once we were at that point where we needed you, whether or not we re realized it or not, we were at that point where the breath would only come from the breath of life, Jesus Christ. The breath of life would only mean something if it points to you, Lord. Lord, I look at Chloe, this beautiful young person, and I know that you have a plan for her because you have said in your word that you know the very numbers of hairs on her head. And just beyond that, you know which one came first and which one came last. And that your infinite plan is beyond just this surly earth. We listen to the beautiful music of Juan and the touch of his fingers. I'm just amazed by seeing the master and the, the craftsmanship that it takes to get to that point for a young person to be able to play to that ability. It takes, it takes a lifetime often to reach that point. But I plan to catch up with you on. Lord, we plan to catch up with them because we'll have eternity to learn to play. We'll have eternity to learn and to be with you, uh, to learn something to play, to learn something to speak. And it begins today, Lord. It begins today with fasting and earnestness. So as I take this box, as I have my hand on a sunny shoulder, and as I think of Chloe and each person in this congregation and the wonderful message that Pastor Jorge has shared with us today, let us leave here knowing that we can trust in you and trust in your plan, not just 10%, but all of it. In Jesus' name. Amen. All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence day. preaching of the gospel, the finishing of the work would not happen by our power. It is by my, it's not by my, nor by power, but through the power of your Holy Spirit sharpening our heart. Father, here it is the congregation. I don't know what they will surrender for 21 days. But whatever they surrender, help them to finish strong. Help them to start well and to finish strong. Maybe there is someone here that is trying to surrender the way they speak to each other. May you season the words that they speak from now on for 21 days, just 21 days with kindness, with love, with consideration for others. Maybe there is a kid that needs to be surrendered by, for 21 days. May you answer that prayer. Father, I don't know what we're going to be surrendering with each, to you, but whatever we put in the altar, will you use it for your honor and glory? 
may be with each one of us. And after, one, after the 21 day, we're going to have again a celebration over here in our church. And we're going to do communion and we're going to do a, a celebration of what had happened during those 21 days. We ask you, Lord, to bless us and empower us and give us the edge back to accomplish your mission. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.